Hey guys, uh, one other quick conversation. Uh, I said quick. I shouldn't say that. I gotta stop saying that. One other conversation uh, that that needs to be had or explanation. Maybe this looks familiar. Somebody sent me that. I don't think that one's mine. Um, I, I have one of my own, which looks identical because I haven't actually built one yet. I'm operating on my confidence level, which is very high that I'm not going to have any issues. Um, here's the... if I, Maybe you've never seen this, but the harness. This is the harness. This is the thing which you can hide under your plastic, uh, your plastic shell in your car. Uh, this is going to hide under most plastic shells. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, so then you just have this little USB-C. Well, they, they call it OBD-C. This connector runs from here to your Black Panda or your uh, Comma 2. So that would be the part that's visible. But, so we, it's confusing because when you're buying this harness and it costs 200 bucks, technically this is the thing that costs 200 bucks. These are just kind of, they come with it. You can't buy the harness without the wires. So what I've been doing with, well, offering anyway, what, what, what I've been offering is that people send me their wires. I will hook them up. I will send them back. So as you can see, the harness has, uh, they've put a lot of ele electronics in here. This takes care of a lot of the things that were present on the giraffe, like the dip switches aren't necessary anymore. Um, and you don't need a giant OBD2 port. Uh, so these wires need to be connected appropriately to a camera connector like this guy to plug into the camera this part's no problem because these are these are crimp connectors so I can just attach these terminals here these crimp terminals to the ends of these wires I can then push them into here we're all good that's a, a standard approach no problems here's the problem the male connector does not exist in a crimp format. They are all through hole, uh, board mount, all of them. So, okay, our first, well, my first idea was to build a tiny circuit board that you would solder this to. The circuit board would then just be a little bit bigger than this and it would provide, um, what do you call them? Uh, a crimping or you know some non-solder means of attaching the wires to it i didn't want to order a board i didn't want to deal with another set of crimp connectors so forget that for now instead what i'm gonna do for at least we'll call it the first generation that uh y'all are gonna get I can't just solder wires straight to this. Um, if I was skilled at wire wrapping, maybe I could, but wire wrapping you do with single strand wire, not, or with, with solid wire, not stranded wire. I learned that during the research process. Um, so I can't wire wrap. How am I going to connect those stinking wires to these tiny little pins? For the first gen, here's how we're going to do it. This little uh, female terminal here, it's a crimp terminal. These wires will fit swimmingly on it. So I can attach the wire to this terminal using a crimp with no solder. So it'll be a, a, a secure vibration tolerant connection. Then I am just going to take, oh no, I'm dropping things. I'm just going to take this female terminal 
Ah, this, I, I should have brought my camera mount. Hang on a sec. So we're going to take the female crimp terminal and we're just going to stick it on the pin. And it goes on plenty far enough for a good connection. And then, oh, I don't know if I can, you can kind of see that there's a hole in that there. I will then solder this terminal to the pin. So the terminal will be soldered to the pin, but the wire will be crimped to the terminal. So we're not soldering any wires to anything. It should be just as vibration resistant as if this were soldered to a circuit board. Um, of course, uh, I will also use shrink wrap. So, you know, once all these are on and soldered, then we'll push down the shrink wrap, shrink it, you won't even be able to tell. Um, I might even then take the bundle of wires coming off the back of it and shrink wrap it just to um, provide more uh, vibration resistance. So that's going to be the first gen solution. Uh, I don't know if Kama will upstream that though. That, that is, uh, my goal is to come up with an adapter that comma.ai will accept, and then they will start selling and producing. Uh, so I don't have to. That would be nice. But they're not going to do this. This is silly, what I'm doing here. So what I may have to do is 3D model this bad boy, or get a 3D model of this bad boy, and find some ma some some pins that match the dimensions of these pins and build a suitable mail connector like I did for the uh like I did for the um uh, accelerator the throttle position sensor connector design it and build one of these that will take regular crimp connectors uh, so I'm guessing that Kama will accept that because they can print these things. They can use a standard part that you push in and it clicks in place and it works the way these are supposed to. That'll be down the road. This is going to work just fine for now. Um, I haven't done it yet, obviously, as I said. That is coming up very soon because uh, I think my very next fulfillment is expecting one of these. So... Once I have it built, which it's, it's not going to be as easy as some people think it is, but it may not be as hard as I'm making it out to be because I haven't done it yet. Um, the problem is we, uh, these things have, these have pass-throughs. There's, uh, I think four, there's four pass-throughs. I think I need six pass-throughs for this. Which means that I am going to have to do something ugly that involves running a wire directly from here to here without passing go and collecting $200 in the harness. It doesn't need to go in the harness. I don't even know that the harness can look at the pass-through values. It's, it's just sort of a convenience factor and it makes it look neater if everything goes from here into here and from here into here but that's not going to be possible um okay not true technically on a bolt um i could do it without having to use any extras because there are a few pins that the bolt doesn't use however i don't want to build a connector that is bolt specific or i don't want to design a, p a connector that only works with the bolt because we got a bunch of other cars that people are using and some of those cars use some more of the pins Harness doesn't need to know about those pins, but we most definitely need to pass them through. Or people won't be able to take advantage of some of the extra features on some of the newer cameras. So, uh, it's a good thing I have a whole bunch of wire <laughs> available. Um, but what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking, what I'm planning to do is to make the wire that, I, that goes straight from here to here long enough to go down to here and back up to there and then maybe I could even like zip tie it or something down here so it will look the same as the rest of the wires yeah I'm thinking that's what I'll do and I'm gonna do that real soon very soon actually anyhow 
I thought those of you who are waiting for the comma two or the black panda adapters for the bolt would like to see w what is coming. Uh, there's a couple people who have wanted to do it themselves. At least one of them discovered that it really is not as easy as it looks. Case in point. These, these, these crimp connectors. Uh, you can't use a regular crimping tool on them. You can't just use a pair of pliers. This is something we're putting in a car that is steering your car and controlling the gas and the brake. You really, really don't want, um, you don't want to have a bad crimp connection. So I have this awesome crimping tool. It has different sides for the insulation and the wire. It does a super good job and it makes super good crimps. I wish I could show you uh, an example, but they're all inserted. Uh, once I have it all figured out, I will, of course, be putting the schematic um, online. Everything I'm doing is open source. So you will be able to do it yourself. But unless you've got the right crimping tools and a little bit of experience, I just am concerned about the do-it-yourself approach. Um, because I, I don't want anybody getting in an accident because uh, their crimp didn't hold. <sighs> okay, I'll get off my soapbox. It's not, in this case, it's not, it, in none of the cases, it's, it, it's not about making money. What I'm charging, the, the, it's a, it's a third, right now, this may go up, it may go down, depending on how hard it ends up being. I've been charging $30 for the service. If you send me the wires, I will attach the connectors, test it, and send it back. Um, that, I think, is going to be $30 well spent. So you don't have to go out and try to buy this thing. You don't have to buy this thing. And then after you buy this thing, you find out that you also needed to buy the terminals. <laughs> uh, to save yourself the trouble and let me do it for you. Um, also, once I have it down pat, I do actually have the connectors and the parts. So I don't need your wires. I could just make them and sell them. But then you're going to have this thing. Who knows how much this is worth laying around? I, I don't know. It's going to be an option. I'm actually setting up a store, uh, a Shopify store, um, where all of the things that I'm selling will be available. There will be the option of, you know, the exchange version. And then there will be the option of just getting one that doesn't require an exchange, which will cost more, of course, because... Uh, sorry about that. Um... Yeah, so you, you can buy one that's just pre-built. You don't have to bother with the cross-shipping. It'll cost a little more. Or you can do the service where I apply it to your wires. Who knows? Maybe I get sick of doing the service and I only offer <laughs> the, the pre-built ones. This is brand new. We're all learning. Um, also, after I get this... After I get this... Uh, the physical connections taken care of... Um, it's not going to work out of the box with the code because there's a little relay inside here and the relay in here causes a direct physical connection between your camera and the car while open pilot is not online, which in some cars that just takes care of a lot of the error messages you get about the camera being missing and things like that. On the Chevy Bolt, it is so picky about rolling counter values that if we have the relay break the connection, we have to know exactly what the correct next um, rolling counter value is. If we don't, it's not going to work. I'm operating under the assumption that we will be able to figure it out. Uh, 
I will be able to figure it out. I'm going to be really disappointed with myself if I can't. But if I can't, I have an alternative solution. And that alternative solution is actually going to cost you guys, if, we, if I do it, quite a bit less. This whole harness stuff isn't necessary. Um, this OBDC thing here, that has all the connections that I need uh, to, to essentially reproduce the giraffe almost one-to-one. -one. Uh, and then you don't have to buy this $200 thing. You'll just have to buy probably a $50 thing for me. But you want to get a harness. And there's no way that Comet is going to upstream that because they want you to buy the harness. So anyway, that solution that does, if I make a solution that doesn't use the harness, uh, you're going to have to buy that for me forever. I think I covered everything. Um, I apologize for the delays. Um, I'm super grateful for your patience, super grateful for your support. If you want to hop on Patreon and become a supporter to help with R and D, that'd be great. If you want to just give me a one-time donation, you can do it on uh, on PayPal. The information will be in the description, and uh, or or you can try to purchase some of the the parts that too if you want to jump on board. So all of those things are excellent ways that you can help support uh, myself and this project. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a great day.